Here we're going to be looking at a receivables turnover ratio, and that's the liquidity of accounts receivable. And for example here, Corporation A had a beginning of the year accounts receivable balance here of 15,000, net sales of 100,000, and collection of receivables of 80,000 here for the year. So let's go look at our accounts here. So first for accounts receivable, the beginning balance here, debit amount of 15,000, and then we had sales of 100,000 for the year here, all on, on account here. So we'll debit our accounts receivable before a hundred thousand and then we'd be crediting our sales here for a hundred thousand dollars now all these sales for our basic example here are on account here are assigned to accounts receivable and they're net of any allowances or discounts so this represents a net sales of a hundred thousand for the year and then going back to our accounts receivable here uh, we collected eighty thousand dollars of these accounts receivable here so we reduced our accounts receivable and then we debited our cash account here for eighty thousand and then the net amount here at the end of the year for accounts receivable would be the beginning balance plus the hundred thousand here that for our increase in accounts receivable less the eighty thousand that we collected on accounts receivable that leaves us with an ending balance here of thirty five thousand dollars so the key here is we have to know the beginning balance here of fifteen thousand and then we ca calculated the ending balance here to be thirty five thousand dollars so what are we talking about here for this receivables ratio uh, um, turnover ratio so we have the net sales here here, and then we divide that by the average trade receivables or the net amount here of the average trade receivables and that equals the accounts receivable turnover ratio so this receivables turnover ratio that measures the number of times the company on average a company collects the receivables during the period and that would be the average receivables outstanding can be computed from the beginning and ending balances of our trades receivables so let's go look up how we make this calculation first for our net sales here are hundred thousand dollars that's the amount here that we had calculated that's um, net of any allowances or discounts so that would be our net sales here and then we take the uh, look, divide it by our average accounts receivable here first for our beginning balance we have that here at fifteen thousand here that was the beginning balance in our accounts receivable and then we have to add in the uh, the ending balance here accounts receivable remember that was the uh, fifteen thousand here in the beginning balance plus the hundred thousand that was increased for the year here on our we recognize as accounts receivable less the eighty thousand dollars that we collected on our accounts receivable so the ending balance here we determined to be thirty five thousand dollars here so you add up the beginning balance here plus the beginning balance are the ending balance here so fifteen thousand plus thirty five thousand gives us uh, uh, would give us fifty thousand divided here by two uh, that would be twenty five thousand that this denominator amount here and then the numerator hundred thousand divide twenty five thousand into a hundred thousand and you're going to get four times the turnover ratio that's the uh, receivables turnover ratio here that's how many times we turned over our accounts receivable and then we can also look at it it here is the average number of days to collect these receivables so 365 days per year divided by our turnover ratio here of four and we get our average days here to collect receivable of 91 days now we would use this average collection period here to assess the effect and effectiveness of the company's credit and collection policies and you can compare prior periods to see how the collections are trending either an increase or decrease in this ratio so next we'll look at our turnover ratio when we're factoring receivables now we'll look at how our receivables ratio here is affected when we factor some of these accounts receivable or we sell off some of these accounts receivable and we'll look also at the expenses involved here in this factoring of our accounts receivable and for example here corporation a is going to sell ten thousand dollars of the receivables that they collected for the year so remember they collected a hundred thousand dollars on their accounts receivable and they're going to sell off ten thousand of these receivables and it's going to be at the end of the year here for uh, ease in our for easy calculation that we're going to make here uh, so corporation a the seller here they're going to debit or credit or reduce their accounts receivable here which is an asset account here and bank b is going to buy these accounts receivable or they're going to debit their accounts receivable account here and then bank b is actually going to pay uh, corporation a the seller here ninety one hundred dollars here so you can see that's less than the ten thousand dollars of the value of these receivables here so uh, bank b credits their cash account for ninety one hundred and 
Corporation A here is going to debit or increase their cash account here for $9,100. Now the $9,100 is less than the $10,000 here uh, due to the fact that there's some allowance here uh, for our accounts receivable for sales allowances and discounts here. And then there's also a financing expense here on the sales of these accounts receivable. So the next thing we set up here is a due from factor here. This is a reserve a receivable account here for Corporation A. And then we have a due from seller here for bank be uh, it's a reserve a payable account here and what uh, we would in this case we're going to take ten thousand dollars of these accounts receivable and we're going to set, set up five percent of them here are going to go for a sales allowance and discount so we would debit our due from factor here for five hundred dollars and then or increase it here and due to seller here for bank b uh, would credit here for five hundred dollars and this is really a sales allowance account here so if not all the sales allowances are used the balance would go back to here from bank b to corporation a the seller now we have to set up this loss on sales of receivables account here and that's going to include here uh, two things here first this is where we have those accounts receivable financing expense here uh, in this case it's four percent here of the ten thousand dollars so we would debit here uh, for our loss here on receivables for four hundred dollars and then uh, bank b would credit or increase their financing revenue here for four hundred dollars and then we have one other thing here we're going to sell these receivables with recourse here that's where bank b can come back and charge uh, Corporation A here for any uh, uncollectible accounts receivable. So we have an estimated amount here of a uh, uh, uncollectible accounts of a say of a thousand dollars here. So we'd credit or increase our resource liability account here for a thousand dollars and then we would debit or increase our loss here on sales of receivables here for a thousand dollars. So at this and of course this here is the estimated amount or the probable payment for these uncollectibles that are going to be made to um, Bank B here if Bank B can't collect on all those receivables or they have bad debt. So the total amount here in our loss on sales of receivables is $1,400 in this case. But not all of that will be realized. It depends on uh, if there is any bad debts on them and on the amount of allowances and discounts and so forth. Or it could increase here if there is a, a greater amount here. But at this point we're going to look at $1,400. So now let's go up and look at how we would calculate our receivables turnover ratio with this factoring. Again the same equation here. Net sales divided by the average trade receivables. The net amount here equals our accounts receivable uh, turnover ratio here. So again we had the $100,000 amount here for the net sales and then our beginning balance was the same here $15,000. But this is where this uh, factoring comes into play here. The ending balance we have to calculate that here and we're going to calculate it out to be $25,000. That's where we had the beginning balance here of accounts receivable $15,000 plus the sales for the year here of 100000 minus our normal collections here of $80,000. And then we have to subtract out this factoring of accounts receivable. Those are accounts receivable here that we sold at $10,000. And for our calculation, we just did it at the end of the year here so we can come up with an easy entering balance. So here's the factored receivables at the end of the year of $10,000. So taking that net amount here, we're going to come up with $25,000 here. So adding those two together, um, and dividing these, this, uh, this amount here to 15,000 plus 25,000, the total amount here divided by 2 into 100,000 gives us five times our turnover ratio here. So let's go down and look at our average number of days for collection here with the fa receivables with factoring. So we had the 365 days divided by five times. Our ratio here is increased from four to five times for these factoring of those $10,000 receivable it gives us 73 days here. And then comparing it to the average number of days without factoring, which we calculated here, 365 divided by the four times here for our, our turnover our accounts receivable, 91 days. So you can see we had a reduction here by factoring our accounts receivable from 91 days to 73 days and that again was reduced by this factoring of our accounts receivable but there are costs involved here and this is what we have to weigh out here and then the cost to consider when factoring our accounts receivable just say we had accounts receivable at 10,000 and then we had this allowance account here for 5,500 
dollars. So we would subtract that out. It may not all be used or there may be some more that we have to include here. But And then we have this finance charge. This is the main thing. When your factoring accounts receivable, regardless, we have to pay for this finance charge here of $400 on those, that factored amount here. And then the cash received here was $9,100. So we sold off $10,000 worth of receivables, but we only received $9,100 in this case. And then we have this additional amount that we have to look at here uh, when we're factoring our accounts receivable. And that's this loss on sales or receivables here, uh, at, where it would include the estimated amount here of the un uncollectible amounts of those receivables. And that could be the same if and if we sold the receivables or if we didn't sell it, we still have to pay back these uncollectible or these probable payment here for the uncollectibles. Or we'd have to reduce it here from our accounts receivable. But nonetheless, you can see when we're factoring our accounts receivable, we have uh, recognized here a liability, increases our liability account here on our balance sheet here. And then we, we have to recognize some loss on sales here. And we have to do that comparison uh, versus not collecting or uh, not factoring our accounts receivable here to get a better turnover ratio. So by factoring our accounts receivable, we improved our turnover ratio here or we increased our turnover ratio, reducing the number of days uh, that average days for the con collection here uh, base versus without our factoring of our accounts receivable.